Hey, welcome back to the channel. And I'm happy to say we are talking about Neville Goddard. Of course, we're talking about living in the end, but we're talking from the 4D manifestation angle. And I will also be talking to you and teaching you the 4D painting technique, which goes right in alignment with what Neville teaches. I think you really enjoy it. It's a useful tool. And I will tell you a story about how I overused it or kind of used it in a way where the be careful what you wish for rule of the universe took effect. So I'll explain that story so that you can avoid having that happen to you. Let's get started. And if you don't know me by now, my name is David Hamilton. I'm a coach to high achievers, entrepreneurs, career professionals, and the like. Really help them create the next level of success. I also go by Coach David. And I absolutely use imagination with clients and help them use imagination and bring in Neville Joseph Murphy, the best of the best in terms of manifestation, to assist because my clients need that help. Being big action takers, they need imagination help a lot of the times too, so they can get more in that flow, create and or manifest, although they don't always call it that, but that's what it is from that flow. And I want to jump into a Neville quote here, but first I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page of what 4D means versus 3D. Most of you know, but I just want to make sure in case you don't, you're coming across this video, what that means. Well, 3D of course is our physical reality, right? The physical solid matter reality that, that we see. And it's even, you know, things like light or water or anything that is physical, right? Anything that's physical and phenomenal, basically. 4D, of course, is that which is unseen but only seen in the mind, in the realm of thought or imagination. It is the realm where the thought starts off and has the potential to become 3D if it is carried out to the end, to the manifestation of said thought. Does that make sense? I hope so. If not, leave a comment and I'll help you clear it up, but it should be straightforward there. And so a perfect Neville quote to start us off is from The Power of Awareness. I really love this book. And it goes like this. The great secret is a controlled imagination and a well-sustained attention firmly and repeatedly focused on the object to be accomplished. It cannot be emphasized too much that by creating an ideal within your mental sphere, by assuming that you are already that ideal, you identify yourself with it and thereby transform yourself into its image. Thinking from the ideal instead of thinking the idea of the ideal. Every state is already there as mere possibilities. As long as we think of them, but as overpoweringly real when we think from them. So a huge difference that Neville's talking about here, right? We're not thinking of as if it's out there somewhere. We're thinking from in here. That's how we live in the end. That's how you tie the feeling in, which is the secret to 4D manifestation. And you must continually reinforce that and feel that. And if you feel or reinforce anything different, it's going to slow down the manifestation or potentially stop it completely. So that's why Neville was so adamant about the feeling is the secret. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and don't feel anything else, or at least don't feel something contradictory to it, right? If you're gonna feel it and let it go, then as long as you're present and going on through your day. But if you get into a scarcity mode or a lacking mode or thinking it's not gonna happen, now you're coming from the opposite 4D reality, right? And that's going to screw with your manifestation. So just to be clear, let's outline a five-step process here. Five steps to 4D. How about that? Just to help solidify it in everyone's mind. And isn't it interesting how much content is made around manifestation in general? But let's just say Neville Law of Assumption. How much there is made... And it's saying basically the same thing over and over and over, sometimes from different angles, but a lot of times similar angles and sometimes the exact same angle. And I was thinking about this tonight as I was on a walk and I was doing a little manifesting and walking and thinking about this video actually. And I just thought to myself, the reason is, is because it is so difficult to do until you learn how to do it. And there's always levels of refinement because the 3D world is kind of tricky, isn't it? Isn't it kind of easy to get overrun by a thought or an emotion if something happens in 3D and it triggers you? 
Like, why is there so much content and why is everybody seeking so much? Well, I believe and have noticed it's because our minds are so tricky, if I'm to correct myself, not the 3D. And it's like we can't believe and there's self-doubt and there's fear and anxiety and all kinds of emotional states, a lot of times on the negative side, that overrun us and cut us off from our ability to not only imagine, but hold that 4D reality in place so that it comes tr to fruition. And we're really attached to, or our minds get so easily attached to current circumstances so easily. That's what I've noticed. Have you noticed that? That's the way I see it right now. Maybe I'll see something different later. So anyways, let's go to the five steps here. So step one is to realize, remember that the present moment is the only thing that actually exists. It's the eternal now is another way to look at it. Whatever is past, present, and future only exists in the now. Another way to say it is nothing can be created or destroyed. Everything always already exists. It's infinitely existing, which means it has no beginning and no end. It cannot die. It cannot not exist. It just exists. And that's it. And so it is in the moment of now that we create from 4D into 3D to bring it into 3D. And then, of course, everything in 3D comes and goes. It just takes longer than in 4D, where in an instant, we could have a thought and then we could, poof, vanish, or it will vanish on its own. If we lose focus and go, ooh, doom scroll. I'm going to go doom scroll now. My favorite new term, doom scroll. <laughs> Or whatever scroll, right? Or, oh, another Neville video. Gotta watch that, right? So step one is know that the now is the only thing that actually exists. Step two, decide and choose what you desire, right? And really feel into that desire. Meaning, when I work with clients, I always talk about if we really want something, we don't have to think about it. We don't have to figure it out. We just know that we want it. Maybe we can add some details to it and talk a bit more about it, but the core fundamental desire is just there. We don't even have to try, right? It's like when you're attracted to somebody or in love with somebody, you don't have to explain why. Anything that you explain why is after the fact. It's just rationalization after the fact. You don't need to. You just know. And so, of course, with step two, choosing, deciding on that desire, meaning you're actively going to hold it, choose to hold it in 4D and imagination is to really go for it. Go all out, right? Be bold about it. And don't try to talk yourself into desiring something that you don't want or just because somebody else does, right? That's one of the worst things that can be done. I've had clients where they are, say, dating somebody and they try to talk themselves into staying with the person. And when I do a little coaching and get them to their gut feeling and their gut intuition, or their heart, it's all kind of the same thing out of their head, they just answer immediately, well, no, or yes, but sometimes it's no. And they're trying to, you know, they're operating out of fear, and they don't want to think that they may not be attractive again. And some of these are very young people. I'm like, you don't really have to worry. I know, but you're just caught in your thoughts and ruminating, and that's okay, but you got to realize what's going on here. And so remember that when you are authentically aligning with your desire that all possibilities already exist. So you don't need to half asset, okay? <laughs> you don't need to half mast it, as it were. And so the third step is to create your 4D device or instrument. What I mean by that, it's very simple. It's creating a scene, you could use a phrase, anything that represents what you wanna create in the 4D to bring into the 3D to manifest. Typically it's a scene. Visual is very powerful. It works very well for me and for a lot of people because ultimately we need to feel the feeling. That's how we are impressing upon the substance of everything that has never been created or destroyed. And we're selecting that possibility and impressing upon with our 4D imagination. Okay. I just started to nerd out here before I was recording this. I thought, wow, how amazing that we can just conjure up words out of nothing. We can conjure up images. It's almost, and it kind of is more fun than 3D, actually. It's like you can just play in 4D and not have anything manifest and have a blast. I mean, that's what we did as kids with daydreaming. Of course, we're here to get our stuff. That's why you're here, to make it 3D. So just kidding. <laughs> you know, not kidding, but kidding. That 4D is amazing. It's so fun. And the more 
that we can bring that sense of lightness and not seriousness. And when's it coming and the lack and why is it not here? Then the easier it can be as long as it's an authentic desire, of course. So create a scene or two and you can rotate the scenes if you want, but it's good to try to keep to one scene that really ties to that desire that you can focus on to bring in the feeling. And it's really interesting also to think about how the feeling is completely 4D, but the feeling is the power part, right? That is how we experience it before it comes into fruition into 3D. So step four, and so the fourth step is a standard step of being meditative about it, visualizing, right? closing your eyes, going within, withdrawing from 3D reality so that you can focus purely on your 4D object, right? Your device, instrument, and really see it. If you want to be saying something to somebody, I have a manifestation I'm working on now where I am saying, I'm looking at something and I'm saying something to someone who's close to me after it's been created, right? And I can see it. And even right now, I can see it and feel it. And why? Because I've been practicing it over and over and over again for the last several days as I created this 4D device to use, right? Really feel it in the here and now and feel it as real as 3D physical reality. And when I show you 4D painting technique, it'd be a little different in this step. It'll be a lot of fun. And we'll get to that in a moment. And now step five of this 4D manifesting process, a la Neville, is to seal it off with gratitude. I always recommend if you're not feeling gratitude already, gratitude is the state of receivership, as Dr. Joe Dispenza often talks about. It really, really works for any manifestation. And why does it work? Because we say thank you for things that we already have that we're grateful for. That's why it's a powerful emotion to use to create and always seal off practice. It is the most powerful one, I would say, because of that, right? If you're feeling joy about something, it's it's a good one too. It's in the moment as it's arising. But gratitude, typically, we need to think, oh, wow, I'm grateful that I already have my mother, my father, my little brother, my doggy, my kitty, right? Something that we've had for a while, typically, we're grateful for. So there's already been a delay that it's been in 3D physical reality. You see that? That's the genius of using gratitude. Not to mention on the scientific side, the University of California, Berkeley has done full on research about the power of gratitude to help people feel better and happy, but we're using it for right creation here, even more so. And so go on throughout your day. And then if you want to re-experience it, you call up the scene, take a moment, close your eyes, right? Or just feel the feeling because as Neville said, the feeling is the secret. And so right now, I'm going to teach you what I call the 4D painting technique. This is something that I'm sure I heard about it before, but I came up with it on my own, somehow spontaneously on my own. I just decided to start doing it as I was playing around. And how I was doing it was I was in a particular kitchen of the place I've been living, and I was like, you know what? I want to start visualizing my next place. And I started to paint the reality of what that kitchen would look like with my eyes open while standing in the kitchen and really feel it and see it. And that's the technique basically. So if you're driving a car, you could do it though. Be careful, still be mindful of the road. If you're walking along, um, on, you know, a road somewhere, and let's say you want to go vacation somewhere and you want to be walking on a different road. The idea with 40 painting is you're in an environment that is similar to the one that you want to be in, but you're going to paint over the one that you actually want to see, right? So if I'm in a car driving, that's the perfect time to 40 paint the kind of car that I want next. If I'm in a house and I want to visualize parts of the house, well, if I'm in the bedroom, I want to visualize what the bedroom is like, right? If I'm in the bedroom, I don't want to visualize the kitchen, right? Or if I'm driving a car, I don't want to visualize a new bike that I want. I want to be on that similar object or in that similar place to use 4D painting the right way. Does that make sense? And recently I've been getting some coaching myself. Hey, the coach needs to get coached sometimes, right? And the coach that I was working with was talking about, you know, in, in terms of a car, really feel the feeling of the car you want to drive while you've painted over the reality of what that steering wheel would feel like in your Porsche, in your Mercedes, in your BMW, whatever the car is that you want in that case, right? And I swear to you, I was already practicing 40 painting 
at least a month, probably two months before I came across this mentor and signed on. So that's what I love is also when I hear somebody say something that I've already been doing, that's a good, that's a point of convergence, I call it. I need to make a video on convergence and the power of convergence. It's when you get signs from multiple places of the same thing that confirm what you're already doing. It's an empowering set of signs, basically, that all converge on the same point. That's why I call it a convergence. And I called it convergence well before I was into manifesting as much as I am now, right? I really just noticed it. It's observational. We all notice these things. I'm not really teaching anything new, or maybe you've just forgotten or haven't seen it for the first time, but it's already there, all these patterns, right? And so hopefully that makes sense on 4D painting technique. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little story, a word of caution, right? A word of caution. So I'm working on some manifestations, and I'm an action taker. I believe in action taking. You have to believe in action taking, right? Neville, when he went to Barbados, guess what? He lived and worked in New York City. It took him three months to do it. He walked. He did things. He had to walk to the boat. It's The boat didn't materialize out of nowhere onto his doorstep. Yet a lot of amazing things happened in his manifestation, his most famous manifestation, most famous he's told story, right? So never be afraid to take action aligned, inspired action. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about forced action. And sometimes you might be taking a lot of action, but it's always aligned in the flow type of action. So back to my story of caution. I was driving around a month and a half ago and I was playing with 4D painting while I was driving in my car. And I was picturing an upgraded car and I was like, this is fun. But I also had this sense that mm, I don't know if I want this quite yet. Why am I doing this, right? But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to play around and do it just for fun. Well, guess what? Sunday night, mid-January, I'm going to the grocery store. It's at night. I like to go at night because there's less people. I really enjoy it. It's like a little adventure. There's some people and I can get what I want, get in and get out. So I'm stopped at this traffic stop and it's kind of backed up because there's some weird construction. And I look down for five, 10 seconds and all of a sudden, wham! I get rear-ended, a guy's going 40, maybe 50 miles an hour, pretty fast, and my car gets totaled. I tap into the person in front of me. And I was in a car accident last year, 12 months ago from this car accident, and I had never been in major car accidents in my life. And now I've been in two in one year. That other car accident, I need to tell a story, it's a story of manifestation, was like a wake-up call. This one, I believe, was due to me effing around with 4D painting when I wasn't ready to get the car and that's what happened. I'm pretty sure that's what happened because I was sitting there doing nothing. What are the odds? <laughs> Maybe they're pretty good, but I don't know. But I know for sure I was playing with this 4D painting and I know I'm becoming a better and better manifester. So make sure, my friends, that you really want it now. I do want this car eventually, but I didn't really, really want it now. And I was messing around. <laughs> and so I got messed around with. Isn't that crazy? So, and, you know, always throw in a little highest and best good in there type of vibe. I do that now too after this lesson. I wasn't hurt. Nobody was hurt. The car is gone. It's a real pain in the butt. I knew I wasn't hurt immediately because the car accident I had over a year ago was, I was fine. I had some pain, but it was worse overall for other reasons. I'll tell the story on that some other time. But again... Use this with care, okay? Much love to you all. I hope this helps. And by the way, feel free to join my email community. Please like and subscribe. If you like this and got value out of it, hit the like to send it out to the algorithm to let people know it's good. And of course, subscribe if you want more of this. And if you are interested in coaching, there's a link below. Of course, I coach from a success base and absolutely bring in manifestation, but we also bring in psychology, whatever it takes to get people to what they want in their business, in their career, in their life. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.